we continue our discussion, <coughs> discussion with machines and today we shall discuss about pulleys we have already discussed about levers and general concept associated with simple machines we start our discussion with pulley a simple form of a pulley either it is a single fixed pulley or a movable pulley or a combination of pulleys which is called as block and tackle system to start with in a pulley arrangement there is a metallic disc which is generally placed over a grooved ring and a string passes over that ring the disc rotates about an axle passing through the center of that wheel and the axle is fixed to a frame or block so any pulley system any simple pulley system is actually a metallic disc it might be a wooden disc also but in most of the situations we use a metallic disc made up of iron or aluminium or some tough metal so it is a metallic disc which is placed over a groove green now the groove green is necessary for the string to pass over the metallic disc this disc is capable of rotating about an axle and the axle is fixed to the center of the disc actually the axle passes to the center of the disc and in order to hold the disc and the axle in position there is a frame to which the axle is fitted and the axle is fitted to a frame over the groove rim a string generally passes a string or a thread a string or a rope or a thread passes over the disc rather saying that passes over the disc always means that passes over the groove rim so it is better to say that the string or the rope passes over the groove that is cut into the ring so this is basically a pulley system and every pulley system consisting of many number of discs will rotate about a uh, axle and the axle is fitted to a frame not necessarily that a pulley system will consist of one pulley it can have many pulleys in in the situation where there are many pulleys the axle is quite big enough so that it gets attached to many wheels but the basic idea is that if the wheel is rotating it is rotating about the axle which is fitted to its center so let us try to start our discussion with a single pulley system a single pulley system a single fixed pulley a single fixed pulley system so a single fixed pulley system is obviously consisting of one wheel and the axle is connected to the 
center of the wheel and it is attached to a rigid support. So single fixed pulley it means that it is capable of rotation. It is fixed in the sense that the wheel is fixed to the axle via the frame. But whenever we are talking about a single fixed pulley, it means that it has an axis of rotation which is fixed. So the axis of rotation is actually fixed. So the axis of rotation of the pulley is fixed and so it is called as a fixed pulley or a single fixed pulley. So in this case what we try to analyze is the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio and the performance of the pulley in terms of its efficiency. So a single fixed pulley will obviously consist of the string that passes over the groove. A very simple schematic diagram is being shown here. So suppose there is a hook to which the wheel and the groove system is connected and over the groove a string or a rope is passing. On one end of the rope we apply the effort and the other end of the rope will carry a load. The other end of the rope will carry a load and one end of the rope on that we will apply the effort. So suppose we apply the effort at this end and suppose this is the load that we are trying to lift. So whenever we try to pull the string, a tension will develop and a similar tension will also develop on the other end of the string. The effort will counterbalance the tension and the load will be balanced by the tension in the other segment of the string. So you can say that the effort is equal to the tension in one end of the string and the load is equal to the tension in the other end of the string. So the effort is equal to the tension in one end of the string and the load is equal to the tension in the other end of the string. Now in this discussion we have assumed that the pulley is an ideal pulley. So while saying that a pulley is an ideal pulley, it means that we have neglected any friction between the string and the groove or the string and the wheel. We have neglected the weight of the pulley. We have assumed that the string is inextensible. It is massless. So these are our assumptions. So for an ideal pulley system, what we do is we assume string is massless. It is quite impossible for any string to be massless, but we assume to make mathematical calculations much simpli simplified. So we assume that the string is massless, the string is inextensible, that means on applying effort or while the load is trying to apply a force on the string, it does not extend. We assume that there is no friction present between the different parts of the pulley. We assume that there is no friction between the string or the rope passing over the groove on the wheel. So these are our basic assumptions on the basis of which we say that the pulley system is ideal and thereby what we get is that the efficiency of the pulley system becomes 100%. But this is not possible in reality. No string can be massless. You cannot ignore friction. But in this case, we are trying to analyze the pulley on the basis of a very simplified mathematical approach and that's why we assume the above. So the effort is equal to the tension and the load is equal to the tension. By the definition of mechanical advantage, it is load upon effort. So this is T upon T that is equal to 1. So the mechanical advantage is 1. That means this type of pulley is neither a force multiplier or it is neither a device through which we gain some speed. The simple application of this type of pulley 
is to apply the effort along a convenient direction. So we are trying to analyze the single fixed pulley on the basis of applying effort in a convenient direction. So this type of pulley can be used to lift very small loads. We can lift some water from a well using a bucket, a bucket of water from a well. So these are the very simple applications of this type of pulley. So what we are doing is we are applying effort in a convenient direction. Apart from that we are neither utilizing it as a force multiplier, we are neither utilizing it as a device to obtain gaining speed. Now, because there is a single string passing over the wheel, if the effort is applied such that the string extends or comes down by a distance x, obviously the load will also rise by a distance x. So you can say that the distance, if the distance moved by the effort is x, whether it is in centimeter or millimeter or meter, whatever it is, if the distance moved by the effort is x, then obviously the distance moved by the load will be x units. So the velocity ratio by the definition is distance moved by effort to distance moved by load, that is x upon x is 1. So both mechanical advantage and velocity ratio are 1. So therefore you can say that efficiency is ma upon vr into 100. So that is 1 upon 1 into 100 which is obviously 100%. Now efficiency is 100% means there is no loss due to friction, there is no loss in efficiency due to other factors. So basically this is an ideal pulley and so the mechanical advantage is one and the efficiency is also 100%. But it is not necessary that in reality this will happen. Definitely in reality we cannot produce a machine by the best of our efforts which has an efficiency equal to 100%. The efficiency is obviously less than 100% for all ideal machines, for all practical machines and for all practical pulleys. So here also we assume that uh, there is no weight of the wheel. So on the basis of these assumptions we can say that the efficiency is 100%. Next we move on to a single movable pulley. You can note it down. Next is a single movable pulley. So by single movable pulley means that there is a single wheel obviously which is fitted to a rim via an axle passing through the center. And single movable pulley means that it is movable in terms of the axis of rotation that is the axis of rotation is not fixed. The axis of rotation is itself movable. Axis of rotation is not fixed at all. Now this type of single movable pulley is used as a force multiplier. So it basically consists of wheel, one end of the stream passing through the wheel is connected to a hook and fixed to a rigid support and the axle is connected to the center and the axle itself will carry some load. So suppose this is the axle, this axle is carrying some load. And the other end of the stream passing over the pulley, on that we apply the effort. So this is a basic single movable pulley. This is the movable pulley, the axis passes to the center, sorry, the axle passes to the center. One end of the axle is carrying the load via some hook and another end of the stream passes through the wheel and is connected to a rigid support and on the other end of the stream we apply the effort. Whenever we apply the effort, the tension will develop in the stream. Similarly, due to the load trying to pull the pulley system, obviously a tension will also develop on the other end of the stream. Now you can realize that the effort is balanced by the tension in one end of the stream. So the effort is equal to the tension, but the load is balanced by both the 
tension in the segments of the string. The tension in the two segments of the same string. The same string is passing over the wheel and the tension in both the segments of the string will togetherly balance the load. So the load is equal to 2T. Obviously by the definition of mechanical advantage which is load to effort this is 2T upon T that is equal to 2. Now since mechanical advantage is greater than 1 obviously this type of pulley will be used as a force multiplier which means that by applying a smaller effort we can lift a larger load. Now if you realize or if you analyze this very carefully if we try to pull one end of the string by an amount x obviously the other end of the string will also move through a distance x but exactly half the distance is moved by the load because whenever we try to pull this end of the string a segment will unwind over one half of the pulley and another segment will unwind over another half of the pulley due to which the load will lift by half the distance. So if you can say that if the load is actually getting lifted up by a distance x obviously the string has been stretched by a distance 2x x from this end and x from this end so that the load lifts by a distance x so you can say that the distance moved by the effort is 2x and distance moved by the load is x so by the definition of velocity ratio which is distance moved by effort to distance moved by load this is obviously 2x upon x that is equal to 2. So both the velocity ratio and the mechanical advantage are 2 which means that the efficiency is ma upon vr into 100 which is 2 upon 2 into 100 that gives you 100 percent. Now this 100 percent is definitely because we have assumed the string is massless, the string is inextensible, there is no friction between different parts of the pulley there is no weight of the wheel and the axle of the frame etc. But in reality this never happens, the efficiency is always less than 100%. Now a combination of both single fixed pulley and a single movable pulley. Combination of single fixed and single movable pulley. This is done to have the advantage of both the pulley systems. In a single fixed pulley, we apply the effort in a convenient direction. That means we apply the effort in a downward direction which is much convenient as compared to the single movable pulley where we apply the effort in the upward direction. If we try to analyze the single movable pulley, then it was more advantageous in terms of the mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage of single movable pulley is obviously greater than one, so it can be used as a force multiplier. In order to have the advantage of both this type of pulleys, it is better to combine them. So what we do is, we can combine both these pulleys and have a pulley system of this form This is the type of pulley system that we can achieve by combining both the types of pulleys. So this portion is taken from the single movable pulley and this portion is taken from the single fixed pulley. So in order to have the advantage of both the pulleys, we actually combine them. So the load will be <coughs> attached to the axle of the movable pulley what we have done previously and we apply the effort 
at one end of the single fixed pulley. So this is the direction in which the effort is applied and obviously this is the load. The load will be connected to the axle of the movable pulley. So the same string is actually passing through both the pulleys. The same string is passing through both the pulleys. So now we are applying the effort in the downward direction which is more convenient and we are lifting the load by applying a much lesser effort so that we are gaining, getting the advantage of a force multiplier. So now the effort will be balanced by one end of the string that is the tension in one end of the string. It will develop a tension in this segment of the string and because this segment is also being pulled it will also develop a tension in this segment of the string. So the effort is equal to the tension in one segment of the string and the load is being pulled by two segments of the string so the load is obviously equal to 2t. So the mechanical advantage will be simply load upon effort which is 2t upon t which is equal to 2. So mechanical advantage is greater than 1 which means this combination is acting as a force multiplier. Now if we analyze the velocity ratio which is the distance moved by effort to distance moved by load. Now again like the previous discussions if the load is actually moving by a distance x upwards that x distance is taken up by both the segments of the string so this segment will move by a distance x and this segment will move by a distance s so that the effort will be effort will pull this string effectively by 2x in the downward direction so the effort is pulling the string by a distance 2x units in the downward direction and the load is getting lifted by a distance x in the upward direction so distance moved by effort to distance moved by load is 2x upon 2 that is 2 and so the efficiency is ma upon vr into 100 that is 2 upon 2 into 100 which is obviously 100% now again it is 100% because this is the ideal pulley system so the objective of combining both the single fixed and the single movable pulley is to have an advantage of both the type of pulleys actually. So now we can apply the effort in the downward direction which is quite convenient and we are getting a mechanical advantage of 2 which means it is acting as a force multiplier. Now we discuss the combination of pulleys which is also called as the block and tackle system. Now sometimes single pulley system, single fixed pulley system or single movable pulley system may not serve the purpose of lifting large loads. So in order to lift very large loads we sometimes use a combination of many pulleys. Now this type of combination might be called as the block and tackle system. The block actually refers to one or more pulleys or wheels which are fixed to a frame. or more pulleys or wheels fixed to a common frame and the tackle simply refers to the string or the rope that winds around the pulleys the string or rope that winds around all the wheels in the different blocks. So this type of combination actually increases the mechanical advantage many times more and if the mechanical advantage is increased to a very large extent definitely by applying comparatively lesser effort we can lift larger loads. So now we discuss two types of block and tackle system actually. Now one block is the fixed one and the other block is the movable one. Actually the upper block is fixed. The upper block is fixed and the lower block is movable. The lower block is movable. 
and the upper block and the lower block will comprise of many wheels and the number of wheels might be even the number of wheels might be odd but whatever be the number of wheels or the number of pulleys the number of pulleys in the movable lower block is either equal to the number of pulleys in the upper fixed block or just one less than that by that i mean number of pulleys in lower movable block is either equal to or one less than less than number of pulleys in upper fixed block remember that the upper block is always fixed and the lower block is movable and number of pulleys in the lower block is either equal to or one less than the number of pulleys in the upper block and obviously a string an inextensible single string of neg negligible mass will pass through all the pulleys the last important point regarding this is a single string or a single row passes over all the pulleys of the wheels and what i have already said that number of wheels or number of pulleys might be even or number of wheels or number of pulleys might be odd also so if it is even then it is quite obvious that number of pulleys in upper block and lower block will be same but if the number of pulleys is odd then the upper block will contain one more number of pulleys so if there are five pulleys then the upper block will consist of three pulleys and the lower block will consist of two pulleys and if there are six pulleys then the upper block will consist of three pulleys and the lower block will also consist of three pulleys so let us analyze both the types so the first situation is both the upper block and the lower block consist of same number of pulleys let me take four pulleys now the diameter of the pulleys will definitely be less they cannot be same again because the single string is passing through all the pulleys so obviously the diameter of the pulleys or the wheels will not be same it is a bit different so suppose this is the upper block which is fixed a common frame passes and it is fixed to the rigid support and this is suppose the lower block and a single string will pass through all the pulleys so suppose this is the single string and this is the lower block which is movable and the load will connect to the lower block the load will connect to the lower block this single string will pass through all the pulleys and finally the string will get connected to the upper block via some hook So again, observe it very carefully that the string is passing through all the pulleys, and finally, the end of the string will connect to the upper block via some hook, and the load will be connected to the lower block on the same axle. So when I apply the effort in the downward direction. it will create a tension in all the segments of the string 
So tension T will create in this segment. Similarly, tension T will create in this segment. A tension T will create in this segment, in this segment, and finally in this segment also. And the load simply tries to apply a force in the downward direction on the lower block. So, in order to analyze the performance of the pulley, we have to consider mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, and efficiency. So, you see that effort is applied on one end of the string. So, the effort is equal to the tension in one end of the string. But, the other segments of the string, this segment, this segment, this segment, and this segment, the other segments of the string is actually lifting the load. So the next four segments of the same string is lifting the load. So the load is equal to 4 times T. So the mechanical advantage is equal to load upon effort. That is 4T upon T that is equal to 4. So the mechanical advantage is quite greater than 1. And so it is a force multiplier and definitely by applying a lesser effort, we are capable of lifting a large load, four times the effort. Mechanical advantage means that the load is definitely four times the effort that we have applied. Now you see that the same string is winding over all the pulleys. So if the load is raised by some distance, the same distance is unwinded in every segment of the string. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you carefully note, there are five segments of the string. This segment, this segment, this, this and this. Five segments of the string. So if the load is lifted by a distance x because four segments of the string is actually trying to lift the load. In order to calculate the velocity ratio, what we do is distance moved by effort to distance moved by load. So this x will find its contribution from each segment of the string. So these four segments together will lift the load by an amount. And so the effort will pull the string by an amount 4x. So x from here, x from here, x from here and x from here. So four sections will contribute towards the lifting of the load. So if the effort stretches the string by an amount 4x units in the downward direction, then only the load will rise by a distance x in the vertically upward direction. So if the distance moved by the effort is 4x, then the distance moved by the load is x. So that the ratio of this is definitely 4 and the velocity ratio is also 4. So the efficiency is MA upon VR into 100 which is 4 upon 4 into 100 and that is equal to 100%. Now this is 100% because we have assumed a ideal pulley system. We have assumed that there is no weight of the pulleys, there is no friction between the different segments of the string and the groove over which the string is passing. We have also assumed that the string is massless, it is inextensible and there is no weight of the pulleys in the lower block or in the upper block. But in reality, efficiency is never 100%, it is always less than 100%. So in, to continue our discussion with the block and tackle system, we have already discussed a block and tackle system with 4 pulleys. Now we discuss a block and tackle system with 5 pulleys. So if there are 5 pulleys, obviously in the upper block there will be 3 pulleys, and in the lower block there will be two pulleys. The load is attached to the lower block and the effort is applied on the upper block. So the string or the rope that will move around the pulleys will be in this manner. The common string for all the pulleys will move in this manner and ultimately the string will get connected to the lower block. Remember that in the case of block and tackle system with 
even number of pulleys that we have already discussed with four pulleys, the stream finally got connected to the upper block. But in this case, we have odd number of pulleys, that is five pulleys. So the stream finally gets connected to the lower block. Through a hook. The string ultimately gets connected to the lower block. The effort is applied. Definitely a tension will create because the same string is passing over all the pulleys. Same tension will develop in every segment of the string. In this segment and finally in this segment. So you can observe that the effort is equal to the tension in one segment of the string and the load is raised by the other five segments of the same string. One, two, three, four and five. Five segments of the string will lift the load. So the load will be equal to 5t. So therefore, the mechanical advantage will be equal to load upon effort that is 5t by t that is equal to 5. As the mechanical advantage is much greater than 1, so this type of pulley system again acts as a force multiplier. We can say that by applying minimum effort, we have generated a large force that is capable of lifting very large loads. Actually, the effort has been multiplied five times in order to lift quite a large load. So, this analysis can be generalized to n number of pulleys. So, if we have a block and tackle system with n number of pulleys, the mechanical advantage will be n. That means the mechanical advantage is such that the value of n which is actually equal to the number of pulleys and the system acts as a force multiplier. So now if you observe the pulley system minutely, the effort is pulling the string in the downward direction by some distance and that effectively is allowing the load to get lifted up. Because the load is balanced by five segments of the string, if the load moves a distance x upwards, it means that the contribution to x is from each of the segments of the string. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Five segments of the string is together lifting the load. So if the load is lifted by a distance x, the effort has to move the string by a distance 5x in the downward direction. So this 5x is a contribution from each of the segments of the string. 5 segments of the string, x for each segment which becomes 5x. So the effort descends by a distance 5x as a result of which the load lifts by a distance x. So if you analyze the velocity ratio which is the distance moved by effort to the distance moved by load it is 5x units by x units which is equal to 5. So both the velocity ratio and the mechanical advantage are same which means that the efficiency is ma by vr into 100 which is 5 upon 5 into 100 that is 100 percent. Because we have <coughs> sorry because we have considered an ideal pulley system the efficiency is 100% but in reality the efficiency is definitely less than 100%. Now we can say that for n number of pulleys the mechanical advantage is equal to n and the velocity ratio is also equal to n and the efficiency is also 100% provided we consider an ideal pulley system. That means the in a block and tackle system the effort gets multiplied n times. The effort gets multiplied n times where n is the total number of pulleys 
and therefore the system acts as a force multiplier. So you can say that the effort is just equal to the tension in one segment of the string and the load is equal to n times of the tension. In this case we have observed that the load is 5t. In the previous case where we considered 4 pulleys the load was 4t. So if there are n number of pulleys the effort is equal to t tension in one segment of the string and the load is equal to n times the tension in the segment of the strings. And from this also you can say that if the effort moves the distance n into x, the load moves the distance x. So this is the generalization for a block and tackle system consisting of n number of pulleys. The efficiency is obviously n upon n because we have considered an ideal pulley system. The efficiency is 100%. But if we consider friction between different parts of the pulley, weight of the pulleys in the lower log, if we continue to say that the string has some mass, definitely all the factors will add up and the efficiency will get reduced much below 100%. It is noteworthy that the block and tackle system and the entire pulley system you can say is just a force multiplier and there is no gain in energy. The block and tackle system is only a force multiplier. there is no gain in energy. This we can definitely analyze. As I have told earlier that in a pulley system with n number of pulleys, the effort, the distance moved by the effort, the load and the distance moved by the load have already been analyzed. On that basis you can say that the work done by the effort, by the effort, is equal to the effort into the distance moved by the effort, which is T, the tension in one segment of the string, and the distance moved by the effort is N into X. If we assume that the string is brought down by a distance nx, where n is the number of pulleys. Here n is the number of pulleys. Therefore, you can say that work done by load the load into the distance moved by the load. The load lifts the distance x and so the effort descends by a distance n into x and the distance, sorry, the load is equal to the number of pulleys into the tension that is n into t whereas the distance moved by the load is x according to which we can say that the distance moved by the effort is nx. The effort is equal to the tension in one segment of the string and the load is equal to the tension in n segments of the string where n is the number of pulleys. So definitely this gives you nxt and this also gives you nxt. So therefore there is no gain in energy. Work done by the effort and work done by the load are both same. So as work done by effort and work done by load are both equal to nxt that is same. So you can say that there is no gain in energy in the pulley system. Now we can consider the weight of the pulleys on the mechanical advantage, the velocity ratio and the efficiency. Suppose for a block and tackle system with n pulleys, For a pulley 
system with n number of pulleys. Let small w represent the total weight of the pulleys and the frame in the lower block. Total weight of the pulleys and the frame that holds the pulleys in the lower block. Remember that the weight of the pulleys in the upper block does not change the performance of the pulley to a large extent. That's why for the time being we are ignoring friction and weight of the pulleys in the upper block. What really matters in the performance, in the mechanical advantage, the velocity ratio and the efficiency is the weight of the pulleys in the lower block, the weight of the pulleys on the frame in the lower block. So suppose we consider that the pulleys and the frame in the lower block has some weight collectively and that weight is suppose represented by W. Then in equilibrium we can say that the load to which this W will add up that means we are actually lifting not only the load but the excess weight of the pulley and the frame in the lower block. So the contribution that means you can say that the effective load is now L plus W which must be equal to the tension in N segments of the string. The effort remains same that is capital T that is the tension in the one segment of the string. So, If I divide L plus W by E, that means I am dividing the effective load by the effort, which is obviously the mechanical advantage, is equal to NT upon T, that is equal to N. Now, this can be written as L by E plus W by E, which is equal to N which means that L upon E is N minus W by E. If you remember L upon E or the load by effort is definitely the mechanical advantage of the pulley system. So the mechanical advantage is not N anymore. It is equal to N minus a positive quantity which means that the mechanical advantage has reduced Previously, when we ignored the weight of the pulleys in the lower block and friction and all other aspects, we saw that the mechanical advantage was n. Now we have considered that there is some weight of the pulleys and the frame in the lower block due to which the mechanical advantage has reduced by a factor equal to the weight of the pulleys by the effort. But the mechanical advantage has decreased, yet the velocity ratio does not change because velocity ratio is totally dependent upon the number of pulleys. Velocity ratio does not depend upon the weight of the pulleys in the lower block, it simply depends upon the number of pulleys only. The number of pulleys and the velocity ratio remains same. MA gets reduced, because MA gets reduced, efficiency will definitely drop below 100%. So if you say the efficiency that is MA upon VR into 100, this is obviously N minus W by E divided by N into 100, which is equal to N upon N is 1 minus W by N E into 100. So definitely it is less than 100%. The efficiency is actually 1 minus W by N E. But if we express in percentage, we just multiply by 100. So you can observe that the efficiency has dropped below 100%. So the efficiency is definitely reduced due to the weight of the pulleys in the lower block. 
more is the weight of the pulleys in the lower block, more is the weight of the frame, lesser will be the efficiency. So, in order to increase the efficiency, the weight of the pulleys in the lower block should be as low as possible. The friction in the pulley, the bearings and all different parts of the pulley system should be minimized because you cannot ignore friction, you cannot totally minimize friction, but we can try to do so. So if we minimize the friction by use of lubricants and oils, and if we try to reduce the weight of the pulleys in the lower block, then we can get a considerably higher efficiency. But still, efficiency cannot be 100%. This we have realized from this discussion. Now we take another type of pulley system, where there is one fixed pulley, but many movable pulleys. For demonstration, I am just showing a pulley system with three movable pulleys and one fixed pulley. But for a general viewpoint, there might be many movable pulleys and only one fixed pulley. Unlike the block and tackle system, which consists of only one string that moves through all the wheels or all the pulleys, in this case, there are different strings that, that are actually passing through all the pulleys. So if you carefully note the diagram, this string is common to both the pulleys, whereas this string is different and this string is different. So in order to lift the load in a vertically upward direction, we apply the effort in the vertically downward direction. That means this string is to be pulled downwards so that the load will lift upward. So this effort will definitely stress the string due to which a tension will develop here. Suppose, let me assume that this is the first string of the set. So the tension is T1 and the same tension will develop here and that is also T1 because this is the same string so the tension T1 will also develop here. Now, from the center of the second pulley, another string is passing. Now this is not the string actually. The string is fitted to the axle and the axle is connected to the center. But to simplify the diagram, I have shown that the string gets connected to the center. So this is another string. Suppose this is the second string. So this tension is T2. And this string continues up to here. So this is also T2. The third string passes from the center of the third pulley, so there the tension is T3 and this also ends up here where the tension is T3. So you can say that the effort is applied to one end of the string, so the effort is definitely equal to T1. Now the load is lifted by two segments of the third string, so the load is actually equal to 2T3. Now if you observe the diagram minutely, T3 is the tension in the third string and this is a movable pulley, the above is also a movable pulley. So T3 must be equal to 2T2 because these two strings together lift the pulley. So the T3 must be equal to 2T2. So you can write here 2T2. Again, if you observe, this string T2 is connected to the movable pulley, which is raised by these two strings. So T2 must be equal to 2T1. So this is 2 square in terms of T2. Instead of T2, we will write 2T1. So this is 2T1. So this is 2 to the power 3 T1. Now there are three movable pulleys, so this factor 2 to the power 3 comes here. If there were four movable pulleys, the factor would be 2 to the power 4. For n movable pulleys, we will get 2 to the power n. So therefore the mechanical advantage is equal to load upon effort, which is 2 to the power 3 t1 by t1, because the effort is t1, which is 2 to the power 3, and that is equal to 8 obviously. So you can say that for a system with one fixed pulley and n movable pulleys, 
for n movable pulleys. Remember that in this system there is only one fixed pulley. So if there are four, uh, sorry, n movable pulleys, the mechanical advantage will be 2 to the power n. Now, if you observe the movement of the load and the effort, the effort, suppose the effort pulls the string by a distance x downwards. Then, this pulley, which is a movable pulley, both the strings of this segment is actually lifting this movable pulley upwards. So this pulley, the second pulley, will actually move or rise by a distance half of the distance moved by the effort. Because two segments are togetherly lifting this movable pulley. So if the effort pulls the string downward, this pulley, this is the first pulley, will definitely rise by a distance x upon pulley. Now if you consider the second movable pulley, it is also rising upward with the help of two segments of the string where the tension is T2. This will definitely rise by half of the previous pulley that is half of x by 2 that is x by 4. And the third movable pulley is also rising upwards by two segments of the string where the tension is T3. So this will exactly rise by a distance half of the previous one, that is x by 8. Which means that the load will rise by a distance x by 8. Whereas the effort is pulling the string by a distance x downwards. So you can say that distance moved by the effort is x and distance moved by the load is equal to x upon 8 which is exactly x by 2 to the power 3. So the velocity ratio will be distance moved by effort to distance moved by load that is x upon x by 2 to the power 3 which means that the velocity ratio is also 2 to the power 3. So if obviously for n movable pulleys again the velocity ratio will be 2 to the power n. So this is the generalization. Now you can see that if the number of movable pulleys is increased, the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio will rise much as compared to the block and tackle system. So this is this arrangement is definitely used to lift very large load. However, in this case we have neglected friction, weight of the pulleys, we have considered the string is massless and so the mechanical advantage is 2 to the power n. But if you consider those factors, the mechanical advantage will drop and the efficiency will also drop below 100%. In this discussion, the efficiency is obviously ma upon vr, that is 2 to the power 3 upon 2 to the power 3 into 100, which is 100%. Obviously, if you consider mechanical advantages 2 to the power n or vr 2 to the power n, the efficiency is also 100%. So, whatever the case, if you consider an ideal pulley system, the mechanical advantage, sorry, the efficiency is 100%. For generalization, you can say that this is 2 to the power n by 2 to the power n. However, the efficiency will again be 100%. So, this is a slight different as compared to the block and tackle system where the effort was multiplied sorry where the mechanical advantage was multiplied n times due to the n number of pulleys but in this situation where we have one fixed pulley and n number of movable pulleys the mechanical advantage becomes 2 to the power n which is quite large 